Hey guys, JMN here, welcome to my video. This time I got a topic which I wanted to discuss for quite a while. I will go a little bit off topic and talk about Japanese literature. Personally, I'm a big fan of Japanese writers and over the years I acquired a small collection of different books. Today I will show you this collection and give you a bit of background information. I know we live in the age of the internet, but I hope there are still some people who like to read physical books. If you're one of them, you may pick up something interesting. As a German, I prefer my native language for reading, but I looked up the titles for the English translations. I will usually follow the chronological order and start with the older writers and their works. This should be enough introduction for now, so let's get started right after the intro. As I said, we start with the classics first. So we got Ugetsu Monokatari by Ueta Akinari who lived in the 18th century. This book is a collection of supernatural short stories which draw inspiration from traditional Japanese beliefs in ghosts and demons, a very influential work which you will find referenced by many modern artists. Next we got two short stories by Kota Rohan. The main story Encounters with a Skull was originally released in 1890. These stories are again influenced by supernatural beliefs and mysticism. We continue with one of the most influential Japanese writers of all time, Ryonosuke Akutagawa. As you may know, Akutagawa was born in 1892 and lived until his suicide in 1927. His heritage lives on until today. His most famous work is Rashomon, which got a popular movie adaption in 1950. This book is a collection of 26 of his most popular short stories. For the next two books I couldn't find an English equivalent, so I will try to translate the titles by myself. The Floods of Sumida gathers 20 short stories from all periods of his life. Dialogues in the Darkness includes 17 short stories which Akutakawa wrote in his last years of his life. Moving on we got Hiyaken Ushida with Realm of the Dead, which was originally released in 1922. The book offers short fictional stories which were almost forgotten. However, Uchida was later rediscovered in the 80s as a pioneer of Japanese fantastic literature. I would even go so far and call him an influence for big names like Haruki Muragami. Following up is Yukio Mishima with Confessions of a Mask from 1949. The novel is about a homosexual who feels like an outcast in the traditional Japanese society and wants to create a new identity by hiding behind an imaginary mask. A very tragic story with autobiographical elements. Next in line is Kensaburu Ue with The Silent Cry, the first author on the list who is still alive. Ue is basically one of the best received Japanese writers of the 20th century. He was rewarded with many awards including the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1992. This novel from 1967 is one of his most popular ones. Now we come to one of my most favorite writers, Haruki Murakami. I really just love his writing style where he throws his protagonists from everyday life in unusual situations and fantastic scenarios. Also he makes so many references to pop culture and literature. I have way too many books so I will just give you the titles. Um, we begin with The Elephant Vanishes, After the Quake and Blind Willow Sleeping Woman. For the last book I don't really have an English equivalent, so it has a pretty strange title which I don't even try to translate. Now we come to his novels. So first we got A Wild Sheep Chase. Then we got Hot Boiled Wonderland and The End of the World. This was my first Muragami book and I gonna be honest and say this isn't really a good starting point. Definitely one of his um, strangest works. Instead you should go with this book, um, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, my personal favorite Muragami novel um, which is way easier to access. After this we got another famous one of Muragami, um, Kafka on the Shore, and then we got After Dark, and last we got a 1Q84 trilogy, um, this is book 1 and 2, and this is the third book. It's also another one of my favorites by Muragami. Um, it pretty much shows that Muragami didn't lose any of his charm yet. We continue with Battle Royale from 1999 by Koshun Takami. And this is definitely a classic of modern Japanese literature. 
Um, it also influenced many Western books, movies, and video games like The Hunger Games or H1Z1, King of the Kill. Basically, he throws a group of high school students together on an island, which have to kill each other in a furious last man standing. To finish this video, we have some more modern stuff, which I won't present in depth. Um, we have Yu Miri with Gold Rush. Tsutsui Yasutaka with My Blood is the Blood of Someone Else. And Natsu Kirino with Devil's Child. Mostly thrillers and easy reading stuff, which you would take on a vacation or something. The very last book uh, is by Yoko Okawa. Um, not sure about the English version, but it can be translated to The End of the Bengal Tiger. It's kind of a very Muragami-influenced collection of short stories. Um, what's interesting about this is that all of these stories are related in some way, and while reading, you will find connections and references between them. This being said, I already went through my whole collection. I hope I could wake your interest for the rich and interesting world of Japanese literature. If you're just getting started, I would recommend you the following four books. For the classics, I would go with Ugetsu Monokatari by Ueta Akinari, and with Rashomon by Ryunosuke Akutakawa. For modern novels, I would go with the Wind Up Build Chronicles by Haruki Muragami, and with Battle Royale by Koshun Takami. I hope you enjoyed this off-topic video, and I think about doing more of these in the future. However, don't worry, I will try to keep them somehow related to Japan. For now, I will focus on musical content again. For example, I want to finally revive my Pick 5 series. So make sure to stay tuned. As always, I would appreciate if you would leave me a like or a comment. For more content, you can always subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter. So, thanks again for watching and have a great day.